Hello, I'm David Kurzel. This is another one in our group of uh, videos about electromagnetic guns and how they work. Today's video is going to be about gun driver modules. This is a 301046 gun driver module. It's the one that we've primarily used up until the last few years. It is used in conjunction with an applicator that has a 120 volt AC coil, even though this device puts out 165 volts DC. This video is going to go into a little more detail, a little more technical stuff than some of the previous ones to explain how these things actually work. <clears throat> the 301046 starts with the power line. So we have 120 volts AC. So we have two lines here. The, uh, the power line has a sine wave of voltage that is 120 volts. Here in the United States, it's 60 cycles. In Europe, it's 50 cycles. The 120 volt level is the average value of the energy that is put out by the sine wave. Um, the voltage is continually changing. Uh, and has a peak value of 165 volts and a negative peak value of minus 165 volts. The average value under each of these curves turns out to be 120 volts, which really relates to the amount of power that uh, something that generates heat would uh, take out of this uh, waveform. The 301046 has a current limiting resistor. There's a large resistor about the size of this marker that's used in conjunction with a gun driver uh, to set the holding voltage of this device. Then there is a device rectifier that takes the AC current from the power line and converts it into uh, DC pulses. They're all in one direction, and they all peak at 165 volts. And this is the other side of the, the DC voltage coming out of the rectifier. We put a capacitor in here to filter the, uh, the 165 volts. And what the capacitor does is holds up the voltage between these peaks. So we get, instead of a pulsating 165, we just get a flat DC 165 volts out of the capacitor. We take this high voltage, we take it out through a connector, the gun cord and all that, to the coil in the gun, and it comes down and it goes to a nice high voltage transistor it goes back to here. So what happens is when we put some current into the base of the transistor, the transistor turns on like a switch and puts the coil across this capacitor. Now because of this resistor, when there's no current flowing, this capacitor goes up to the full 165 volts. But when current starts to flow, there's a voltage drop across this resistor. So what tends to happen is the voltage here comes along at 165, and then we have the moment when the transistor is actuated, actuation, that current begins to flow in the coil. Now coils are inductors, and inductors resist the flow of current change. So it takes a while for the magnetic field to build up. As it's building up, the, uh, the coil produces a counter EMF voltage, and it resists the change in, um, in current. So the, the current starts dropping off. The coil is sucking energy out of the capacitor faster than this can recharge. The voltage comes down. All these pieces come to a quiescent point. And they come out and they stabilize someplace down here at about 
plus 40 volts. This whole operation here takes about 3 milliseconds. So what we're doing is we are hitting this coil with 165 volts really quickly, generating a really strong magnetic field, and then allowing that uh, voltage to drop, which allows the current to drop, and lets the strength of the magnetic field drop. In the, uh, one of the previous videos, we talked about how the magnetic field pulls the plunger up to this uh, stop inside the fluid tube. This high voltage does that. But once that magnetic circuit has been pulled together, you don't need as strong of a magnetic field, so we can drop the voltage and, and minimize the amount of power that's going into the coil. This is a great gun driver. It's pretty simple. There's not much to it. But it has one really big disadvantage. Well, really two. First of all, the coil is connected directly to the 120 volt power line. Um, so everything out here has to have enough uh, insulation and safety and ratings for the 120 volts plus the 165 because they actually end up adding together. The, uh, the other issue is, is what are we going to control this with? Because this transistor is also hooked to the power line. So what we end up doing out here is we actually end up taking an opto-isolator, which is another transistor, and we use it to provide the current into this tran uh, transistor, the one that really drives the coil. And out here, there is a diode, and they're optically coupled, so there is no longer an electrical path from the power line over here to the signal over here that the timer, the uh, PLC, whatever it is that's actuating this gun driver, sees. So the control devices aren't connected to the power line. That's an important thing. Today, we sell a lot of equipment to Europe and Asia and other places. This circuit only runs on 120 volts. So if we were going to sell this to some place like that where their standard power voltage is 220 volts like Europe, 200 volts like in Japan, we'd have to provide a transformer to run this thing. And then all of a sudden, once you put that transformer in there, the cost efficiency of this thing starts dwindling off. There are thousands of these uh, gun drivers in use in tail tie systems and all kinds of timers. Uh, they are everywhere. They're a wonderful timer. They just work. They, you plug them in. They last 10 or 20 years. Uh, you know, it is, you know, what we have used for a gun driver solution for a number of years. Okay, next I'm going to switch to the newer gun driver. Okay, this is the newer gun driver. This is a uh, 305910 gun driver. It is intended to be used with a 24 volt DC coil. The 301046 that we talked about previously uses a 120 volt AC coil operating on 165 volts. So this is a 305910. Um, this is a modern design. It's a switching design. It's more energy efficient. It doesn't have that big resistor that I talked about uh, with the 301046. That resistor gets hot while the gun is on. It wastes a lot of energy. This thing is very efficient. <clears throat> this one is a little bit different. Uh, that it starts with a transformer. And we have a transformer here that has two primary windings, two secondary windings. The secondary is always hooked up the same. Uh, it comes out and it goes to the same kind of rectifier. Um, and it goes to the same kind of capacitor except a little higher value. But right here we have a separation between the power line and the rest of the circuit already. This circuit is completely isolated. So what we tend to do is take this signal and hook it to ground. So everything from here on over is going to be grounded and safe. 
Now with the two uh, primary windings on this transformer that runs this thing, we have two choices. Each of these windings is 120 volts. So we can hook them up one way that we can put a jumper from here to here, and that adds 120, 120, and we can operate this thing on 240 volts. There's enough flexibility in this thing that with the rest of the controls out here that it'll run on two, uh, 220 volts in Europe, it'll even run on 200 volts in Japan. If we change these jumpers, and we hook these two uh, windings up in parallel, like this, and like this, it runs on 120 volts. So just by a couple little wire jumpers, we have worldwide power operation. Now this one runs a little differently because we don't have any resistor or anything. Out here, there is a switching regulator. And this is a device that turns on really fast, turns on and off really fast to maintain a voltage without dissipating power. So it's kind of like time proportional control that we use in a temperature control, but doing it to regulate the voltage. There actually is another small capacitor out here which averages out the ons and offs, so we get a voltage out there. This voltage here is about, the output is 48 volts. It is regulated, it is perfectly 48 volts all the time. So we come out from here, just like in the other one, we have the coil, we have the same transistor uh, running it, coming back to here, and we have the same signal that turns it on. But what's different in this particular design is we have another little control circuit down here that goes up to the regulator, monitors whether the transistor's on or off, and this is a timer. Okay, this sets three milliseconds. In the previous gun driver example, the value of the resistor that was in series with the gun driver, the capacitor in the gun driver, and the coil set the three milliseconds and the shape of the curve uh, for the acceleration voltage. In this one, um, you come along at 48 volts, you have your actuation point, and it goes, the voltage comes out, it goes for exactly three milliseconds, and drops to a holding voltage. And the holding voltage for this particular one is six volts. Now we have zero down here. So this is all done very accurately, very repeatably. Um, there is no changes, there is nothing. The, the electronics take care of it, make it happen just like this. Since this is all isolated, we don't have to do anything fancy out here, but we still do add an, uh, another opto-isolator out here, um, just because it's traditional and it's another level of safety, and nobody has to worry about exactly what's happening ground-wise. What's interesting here is doing some of the math that's associated with this. This coil, our standard 24 volt coil and full size electromagnetic gun, has a resistance of 10 ohms. If we put 48 volts on 10 ohms, we're going to get a current of 4.8 amps. Okay, um, when we multiply it out to figure out how many watts that is, because everybody cares about power, cares about watts, we multiply the 48 volts times the 4.8 amps, and we get 230 watts. That's a lot of power. 230 watts is 0.3 horsepower. So we're going to use 0.3 horsepower for three milliseconds to lift that plunger up off the seat. And that's why uh, it, uh, this whole gun driver thing is so essential in getting all this stuff to work. 
we're hitting this thing with a big hammer. We're really driving this thing hard. Now, as I mentioned before, by the time we get here to three milliseconds, uh, we don't need all that power anymore. Okay? 230 watts is a lot of power, and if you're not using it to move something, it's just heat. So we have three milliseconds and 230 watts. So that's really the amount of power that we're putting into this thing. That ends up the 230 watts times three milliseconds. So it's 230 watts times three milliseconds, 0.003 seconds equals about 0.7 watt seconds. All of a sudden, 0.7 watt seconds isn't a whole bunch of power anymore because it's on for such a short time. When we're here at the 6 volt side, the 6 volts ends up being 0.6 amps and it is um, 3.6 watts, which is also a relatively small amount of power. So we can get away with driving this thing incredibly hard for the three milliseconds, going back to the holding voltage where the power level is greatly, greatly reduced. Now, the, um, the coil can take about 20 watts of power without overheating or anything like that. So we can tell from our 0.7 here that we can run about 30 uh, applicator cycles a second and not be exceeding the, uh, the maximum power that the, uh, the coil can run. Uh, one of the nice features about this gun driver is that the 6 volt holding power is much less than the, uh, the voltage on the 30 Gen 46 gun driver. And this voltage at 3.6 watts is way under the 20 watts that the coil can accept. So this can be run continuously if we have an application that needs continuous operation. Um, the way this particular timer is made, or gun driver is made, it actually has enough power in it to run the timer. So when this particular gun driver is used, this little telephone jack and a piece of telephone wire does all the interconnect to the timer and runs the power for the timer. There'll be another video that talks about timers. So I think that's a, a pretty good uh, once over. It may be a little more technical than I usually uh, try to have these talks, uh, but it explains how these two different gun drivers work, why they're so important, and, and how this particular gun driver uh, can be used in any kind of application. High speed ones, continuous ones, it is virtually bulletproof, you can short the output, you can do all kinds of things to it and it will recover. Thank you. Okay, I forgot a couple things and so I'm going to do a postscript on this video. Oh, another nice feature on this particular gun driver is that this terminal strip unplugs. So if anything ever happens, you don't actually have to fool with all your wiring. All your wires remain connected to this terminal strip. The other thing that's nice about this gun driver is this is one of our first products that's actually fully UL approved and uh, uh, is completely safe and uh, has been uh, it's both CE and UL listed. And I think those are important things for international type buyers. And I think that is going to really end the video. Thank you.